Today I'm going to be showing you how to unlock 5 new armor sets and 4 new weapons in Assassin's Creed Valhalla Wrath of the Druids DLC that are hidden within the new trade post mechanic. So I'm going to be showing you the fastest way to unlock them and which ones are worth getting. Timestamps below if you want to skip ahead. But this video will show you how the trading post system works and how to level it up quickly to unlock all the rewards. So to unlock these armor sets, you must talk to the merchant Azar in Ireland, just here on the map in the city of Dublin, who you meet as soon as you arrive. She requires you to trade her cloth, textbooks and delicacies in order to unlock the new armor sets and weapons and some cosmetic things as well. Each time you complete a trade contract, you will also level up Dublin's trade renown, allowing you to unlock trade with other areas of the world like Egypt, so you can get the Egyptian armor set. Now before I show you the fastest way to farm all of the trade materials really quickly, let me show you all four weapons and five new armor sets that you're going to be unlocking. Firstly, we have the two-handed Byzantine Spear and the two-handed Egyptian Kopesh. We also have a new shield and an exquisite looking dagger as well. I'll talk about each one individually later in the video, but as for the new armor, we have the Iberian armor set, the Egyptian armor set, the Rus armor set, and then the Byzantine armor as well. But we'll also unlock part of the Dublin champion armor set as well. And I'll show you the armor stats later in the video. Timestamps below. So to unlock all of these armors and weapons, you'll need to collect the various trade resources. And the fastest way is to actually accept all the trade missions from the Pigeon Sanctuaries highlighted on the map by this birdhouse symbol. You can choose up to three quests at once for each part of Ireland. Each quest will reward you with trade materials upon completion, and the quests are very easy to complete. They send you to a random location and tell you to kill a group of NPCs or steal something or even clear the area. There's also a random bonus objective for not getting detected or taking damage as well. If you do this bonus objective, you'll get an additional bonus reward after completing the quest. Now there's no limit on how many of these quests you can do, so you can just repeatedly come back and get more to get a fast supply of trade resources. Now the second way you can get trade resources is by capturing trade posts throughout the map. These will reward you with one trade resource per minute, depending on what trade post you've captured. They look like this on the map, and to actually capture a trade post, you just need to clear it of enemies and then you need to use Odin's site to find the deed to the trade post location. Then it will start producing goods for you. You also have an option to upgrade the trade post with buildings constructed using supplies you get from raiding around Ireland. So one of the things you can build is a worksman's cottage, which increases the production of goods. So instead of one per minute, you'll receive two per minute. If you're playing the game a lot, I highly recommend building this first. It's also the most expensive thing you can build though, considering it costs 220. So as you can see, now instead of plus one per minute, I'm getting plus two ivory per minute. The next thing you can build over here offers a refill of arrows when your quiver feels light and some rations for strength when you're weak from a fight. So every time you come here, you'll just get a refill of rations and quiver. This, in my opinion, is a complete waste of supply, so I highly recommend you don't build it until you've got a surplus of materials left over. Instead, we're going to come over here and here we can build the storehouse. Now, when you build the storehouse, it will increase the storage capacity of your chest in Dublin. So as you can see from Dublin, I only have a maximum capacity of 50 ivory at once. And then if I don't go and collect it, I won't be getting any more ivory per minute. So for that reason, the storehouse should really be your second priority. So now you have a hefty supply and income of trade resources, we can go back to Azar in Dublin and start buying all of her armors and weapons. At the very start, Dublin will be renowned level 1, and you can unlock the Iberian Sax Dagger weapon and the Iberian armor set. The Sax Dagger will temporarily increase your critical chance by 30 after a dodge which is literally a guaranteed critical hit every single time you dodge, so it's really cool. The Iberian armor set can also be unlocked and it is one of the coolest looking sets with a blue face mask. The appearance doesn't actually change once you fully upgrade it as well and that is the same for every single armor set that you can unlock here. Now the armor set will increase your evasion by 15 and your melee damage by 10. 
but it will also increase your attack by another 15 each time you dodge. So it pairs really nicely with the dagger or any other weapon that gives you a buff after dodging. Once you've brought all this armor, you'll then unlock Dublin Trade Renown level 2, which also unlocks the ability to buy the Egyptian armor set from Azar. A nice throwback to your time in Egypt. You also unlock the ability to purchase the new Egyptian Kopesh weapon, an insane cross between a two-handed sword and a sickle. I love the black blade and the Egyptian iconography on the handle. Its unique effect ignites your weapon on fire after you do a critical hit for 5 seconds, which is insanely cool for fire-based builds. But sadly, it has a 10-second cooldown, which is quite a long time. So the Egyptian armor set increases your attack during the day, giving you plus 15 attack to everything. It also gives you an additional increase to melee damage and fire buildup resistance. So in total you get 25 melee damage during the day and 15 fire buildup resistance. So it's truly a very decent set indeed and gives you that Egyptian aesthetic and you can still have your hair out as well since you're only wearing a mask and not a full helmet. Once you've brought this armor set, you will reach Dublin Trade Renown level 3, which unlocks the ability to buy the Russ armor set. But the Russ armor is the most Viking looking one we've covered so far, and I actually do prefer its appearance. The cloak even has a nice pattern as well. The armor itself is very powerful since it will increase your attack when you are surrounded by 3 or more people, and again when you're surrounded by 5 or more people. The total attack increase is 20, which is big damage. It also gives you an additional 10 armor and another 10 melee resistance just for wearing the full armor set. So it really is now one of the best armor sets in Assassin's Creed Valhalla for sure, and definitely worth picking up. But also, the other weapon you'll unlock the ability to buy now is the Rust Shield, which has the exact same effect as the Rust Armor, increasing your attack by another 15 when you're surrounded by up to 5 people. So it pairs really nicely, giving you a total of 45 attack damage increase. After you unlock Dublin Trade Level 4, you'll unlock the ability to buy the Byzantine Weapons and Armor Set, which looks insanely cool. A dark red black armor set with a Roman style helmet, and the face is made of cracked porcelain. It also has a cloak that is very reminiscent of the original Assassin's Creed crest and symbols. It really upsets me how good this armor looks considering the armor effect just isn't that impressive. Now the Byzantine armor set will increase your armor after every critical hit for 6 seconds by 15 armor rating. It will also give you plus 10 melee damage and plus 20 health just for wearing the armor set. Now while this armor set does look absolutely insane, sadly there are just better armor sets with better effects in the game. Like for example the Russ armor set that we just went over, which is much more offensively based and, and when you get to the end game that's simply a better option. But you also unlock the ability to buy the Byzantine Spear as well, which sadly looks really cool but it's actually really bad. The weapon increases its critical chance from 100 to zero weight. This means the lighter you are, the more critical chance you have. But the bonus starts at 2.8 at your heaviest to 14 when you have no armor. So it's pretty trash compared to other weapon effects. I just use it because it looks cool, but that's really it. So now we've been over all four armor sets and weapon sets. But there's one more armor set called Dublin's Champion that you will also unlock parts of by simply leveling up Dublin's trade level by finishing all of the trade contracts. This armor set is insanely good. It's now the best archer armor set in the game since it increases your range damage and your stealth damage by a total of 20 each. So for a stealthy archer build, it's, there's nothing better. If you want the rest of that armor set, check out my other guide linked below in the description. But that is all the armor and weapons you can unlock in Assassin's Creed Valhalla's trade system here in Ireland. But once you have reached trade level 5 in Dublin, you can actually just use the trade system to farm silver since there are no more rewards left to unlock. Please do drop a like on the video if it helped you out because it really does support the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day and goodbye.